Good day, Gretels. Welcome to this next lesson in analytical geometry. I hope that you've had a good week so far and that you are ready to carry on learning about analytical geometry. Remember that we were doing a thing which is basically on circles. In other words, the most of this lesson has been on revision of grade 10, or these lessons have been revision on grade 10, and then obviously looking at analytical geometry with respect to circles. And now we're doing a couple of exam paper questions. And the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people underestimate how many marks um, analytical geometry plays in your final exams. And it's actually quite a large uh, percentage, both in grade 11 and, well, especially in grade 12. But, um, sorry, I've just been teaching grade 11 analytical geometry. So, it actually makes up a huge marks. I mean, if you think about it, it's analytical geometry, trigonometry, and circle geometry. That's really all it is in paper two. And analytical geometry is quite an easy section. So if you can get it right, then you can get nice, easy marks, which is why I'm going through so much length to make sure that you guys understand. Okay, so yesterday I challenged you guys to work out um, the... Sorry, I'm just busy sorting out some wires. Yeah, I managed to get things crossed. <laughs> Seriously, literally crossed wires. Okay, so basically, um, I challenged you guys to do these two last two questions. I said to try and work them out for yourself. Um, I don't know how many of you have actually tried it, but we're going to go through it now and make sure that you actually understand what is going on. And then we're going to work through a couple more examples. And like I've said before, see more examples and more. Okay. <laughs> so what I'd like to say to you guys is um, the best way to do these questions is there are two ways. Okay, there are three ways. The first way is if you haven't a clue or if you're sitting on a train station and you are watching this on your cell phone or whatever, then that's fine. Then just watch, okay? Watch and learn. The better way to do it would be if you were, for example, in front of a computer or still on your cell phone but at a desk to try and work slightly ahead of me. I go through these things really slowly. So if you do know a little bit about analytical geometry and you think you know how to do it, then go ahead, okay? So for now, while I'm chatting, you guys, if you didn't do your homework, you should be going through trying to do equation of tangent BD, okay? Um, otherwise, another way of doing this is to watch exactly what I do now. And then what you should do is go and watch the recording of it later. And when you watch the recording, I would pause it at a point like this, where it's at the beginning of the question. And then what I would do is I would try and do that whole question without watching the video. Don't go and do the first one and then try and watch the video for the first one. Because I guarantee you it won't work. You'll end up watching the whole question. And the best way to learn is to try it by yourself. So that's my suggestions and my tips. If you guys don't know how to get to the recording, it's exactly the same way that you get to it um, with the with the live recording. I mean, the live video. Oh, my hat. Sorry. Okay, so let's get going. And let's choose a different color from all the colors we've already got. So this already is imprinted in my on my page now. So I can't change or change, get rid of it in the moment. But frustrating. So we're going to work around it. So let's see. We got green. It says we've got the equation of AB. We got the equation of AB with y is equal to mx, and we found the gradient of the AB was minus 4 over 3. All right, am I right? Minus 4, y2, minus 4, minus. yes, so this was a gradient. So therefore, we said the equation of AB is y is equal to negative 4 over 3x. Okay, and just going through the center of the circles, that's fine. Okay, now it says they want the equation of the tangent BD. So the reason I wanted the equation of AB is because this year is the diameter of the circle. They told us that, okay? And this year is a tangent. And what do we know about tangents and diameters and radii? They are at 90 degrees to each other always. So if I have the gradient of this is minus 4 over 3, what is the gradient of this going to be? Remember that the gradients of perpendicular lines look, work like this. It's got m1 multiplied by m2 has to equal to minus 1. That is the rule, okay? So if we've got m1 is minus 4 over 3 times the gradient of BD, let's call it MBD, equals minus 1, then do you agree that it's going to be MBD 
is equal to minus 1 divided by minus 4 over 3. I just took this across that side. But when you divide a fraction, what do you do? You tip in time. So it becomes minus 1 times by negative 3 over 4, which just becomes 3 over 4. Okay, so that's a very long way of doing it. I've really done it that way to prove it to you, okay? But you guys, if you guys ought to work it out so that you can show your working, if they say show your working, how to get the gradient. However, the, the other way of doing it, guys, is just remember what you do. You flip it and, and change, multiply by minus 1. So you flip it and multiply by minus 1, it's going to give you 3 over 4. So now the gradient of this thing, BD, is 3 over 4. So you've got Y is equal to 3 quarters X plus C. We need to find C where it cuts the Y axis over here. So in order to do that, we're going to substitute in this point. X is minus 3, Y is 4. So you've got 4 is equal to 3 over 4 times by minus 3 plus C. Okay. So you've got 4 is 3 times minus 3 is minus 9 over 4 plus C. If you take that across, it becomes 16, because 4 times 4 is 16, plus 9 over 4 equals C. Therefore, C is 25 over 4, which is 6 and a quarter. Therefore, the equation of the tangent is going to be Y is equal to 3 over 4X plus what plus six and a quarter and grade 12 you always need to have a look and see if that makes sense and do you agree that we said that the radius of the circle were a five that was the length of this radius of the circle is five therefore this point here is five so yes this looks like it's definitely above five so six and a quarter is a good number okay now it says they want us to calculate the angle theta, no, the angle of DBC, 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 okay, to one, angle of DBC to one the decimal place. Okay, so we want this angle here, angle DBC. Okay, do you guys agree that if I got this angle here, okay, I'm looking at this triangle, this triangle here. Okay, if I got this angle here and I got this angle here, do you agree that I could get that angle? Because this one plus that one has to equal that one because it's exterior angles in some of the two interior opposite angles. Okay, so I need to get, we've got the gradient of BD. We worked it out, it was three quarters. So I can immediately get that angle, angle BDC. So angle BDC is going to be, tan negative one of BDC, I mean of three quarters. Hmm. Of three quarters. And unfortunately my pop-up isn't working again. It's driving me insane. I'm gonna have to speak to the thanks to technical people. So it's gonna be shift tan of three divided by four, close bracket equals, so that works out to be 36.87 degrees. So that's 36,87 degrees. I know they said they want the answer to one decimal place. But just to make it slightly more accurate, I'm going to take these bits to two decimal places and then we can always round off the last answer. So this year is 36,87 degrees. Okay, do you agree? Now, do you agree also that we can find the gradient of BC? The gradient of BC. So M of BC, this point here is minus 5 naught and that point there is minus 3, 4. So we're going to call that 2 and we're going to call this 1. So it's going to be 4 minus naught over minus 3 minus minus 5. So it's going to be 4 over minus 3 plus 5 is 2, which equals 2. So the gradient of this is 2. So therefore we can say arctan of 2 is, so let's do it, it's shift tan 2 is 63.44 degrees. It's 
63,44 degrees. So what do we say? We say in that little angle there, that one there, is 63,44 degrees. Okay, so now let me just use a highlighter and show you. Okay, we're looking at this triangle here again, okay? This is the triangle we're looking at. And it line extends, okay? So what we're saying is if we use, let's use, I don't know what to use. If we got this angle, it is 63.44. And we have this angle, which is 36.87. Do you agree we can work this out? Because this angle plus that angle equals that angle. Because the exterior angle is the sum of the two interior opposite angles. That's the rule. Okay. So therefore we can say, oh, you can just subtract this from 100. Never mind. This is fine. So you're going to go 63, 44 equals... 36,87 minus angle DBC. Okay. Sorry, plus angle DBC. So therefore, 63,44 minus 36,87 is angle to DBC. So we're going to subtract then. We're going to go 63.44 minus 36.87 equals, and um, press the SC button, and it's 26.57, so it's 26,57 degrees. And as we've already mentioned, they've asked to do it to one decimal place. So therefore, we need to round this off, and it becomes 26,6 degrees is equal to dBc. There we go. Okay. So, that was quite a nice question. In fact, it was a very nice question for grade 12 maths. Okay, let us look at another one. Okay, so all of these questions, every single one of these questions are old exam paper questions, okay? They've either come out of prelims or they've come out of final exam questions. Um, and they've all come out of very prestigious schools if it wasn't a government paper. In other words, it's high quality. So, we need to make sure that we can do these things. Okay, so let's go through it nice and slowly. So it says P is the point minus 3, 2. And guys, always read the information. The information is important. It also usually gives you a bit more that's on the, than it's on the diagram. And sometimes you get through to halfway and you go, how, how am I supposed to work it out? And you can't work it out because you haven't read the information. So let's read the information. P minus 3, 2 and Q is 1 minus 2 are two points on circle A. Okay, the equation of the tangent to the circle of P, this is the equation of the tangent, I'm going to do it in blue, since they've got it in blue, is 2y plus x minus 1 equals 0. So that's the equation. Okay, in fact, you know what I'm going to do straight away? I'm going to solve that for y immediately. I'm going to solve it for y. So we're going to go 2y is equal to minus x plus 1. Therefore, y is going to be minus x over 2 plus a half. So that's the equation of this tangent. So I'm going to write it out. y is equal to minus x over 2 plus a half. Okay, so now I've got the equation of the tangent. Cha -ching. Now it says b minus 18, 10 is a point outside the circle. So the line BC is a tangent. So that dude there is also a tangent. It says determine the equation of PA. Um, determine the equation of PA. Now A is the center, okay? So therefore that is a radius. Do you agree? That means that that has to be 90 degrees to the tangent. Now I've made my life a little bit easier because I've already worked out the gradient of the tangent. And why is that important? Because the gradient of the tangent and the gradius of the radius, gradient of the radius, always equals minus one because of the fact that they're always perpendicular. So in the last slide, I showed you that if this gradient is minus a half, to get the radius gradient, what do we do? We tip it and we times by minus one. So it's negative two over one, which is just negative two. Do you agree? So that is minus 2 is the gradient of AP. Okay, and now we've got a point P, it's minus 3, 2. So do you agree I can say Y 
is equal to minus 2x plus c. I'm going to substitute the point p in here. So it becomes 2 is minus 2 times minus 3 plus c. So 2 is going to be 6 plus c. So c is going to be 2 minus 6. So c is going to, that can't be right. Because I'm seeing that that has to be going up like that. And actually that means it's got to be a positive, oh sorry, that's a positive plus 2 because you're flipping it and you're times it by negative 1. Oh shame. Sorry grade 12s. So that's a positive 2, that's a positive 2. Okay, right, that makes much more sense. Okay, so please note that when you do something silly like I just did, you need to look at what you're getting and realize that first of all my gradient should have been positive because it's up to the right. And secondly, I should be getting a very positive cut of the y-axis, otherwise I've done something wrong, okay, and I noticed that I'd gotten something wrong. So 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 plus c, so c is going to be 2 plus 6, so c is equal to 8. So my equation of ap is y is equal to 2x plus 8. Okay, awesome, so we've done that. Now it says determine the equation of the perpendicular bisector of pq the perpendicular bisector of PQ. So they want the equation of a line that is going through PQ and it is the perpendicular bisector. Okay, that's what they want. Okay, so what do we know about perpendicular bisectors? First of all, they're perpendicular and secondly, since they're bisectors, they go through the midpoint. So that's what we need. We need to find the gradient of PQ because then we'll have the gradient of the perpendicular bisector. We can work it out. And if we find the midpoint of PQ, then we've got a point on the, this line, the perpendicular bisector. I'm going to call this PB. Can I do that? Yes, I can. Perpendicular bisector line. Okay, that's the perpendicular bisector line. So first of all, let's find the gradient of PQ. So that is going to be, um, it doesn't matter what we call it, we can call this one, and point 1 and point 2. So this is going to be minus 2 minus 2 over 1 minus minus 3, which is minus 4 over 4, which is minus 1. And yet it is a negative gradient, which we expected because it's going up to the left, okay? So M equals PQ, which is minus 1. Now we've got the gradient of PQ. So do you agree the gradient of my perpendicular bisector? What do we do? We flip it and we times it by minus one. So the gradient of my per perpendicular bisector line is just one, okay? One divided by one is one and then you times it by minus, it becomes one, okay? Awesome, now we need the midpoint of PQ. So the midpoint of PQ. Why? Because the bisector breaks this line in half, which means it has to be going through the midpoint. So the midpoint of PQ is minus 3 plus 1 over 2, 2 minus 2 over 2. What am I doing? My equation for the midpoint is x1 plus x2 over 2 y1 plus y2 over 2. It's like finding an average. All you do is add the 2 and divide by 2. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're finding the midpoint. So, minus 3 plus 1, minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2, divided by 2 is minus 1. 2 minus 2, am I right about this? It is 2 minus... Oh, no, 2 plus minus 2 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0. Okay, so my drawing isn't quite right. That's supposed to be up there, but anyway. Okay, so that's 0. Let me just check that. It's going to be minus 3 plus 1. 2 plus minus 2 is 2 minus 2. Yes, I'm right. Now, we've got the point, the midpoint PQ, which happens to be on the perpendicular sector line, and we've got the gradient which is 1. So now we can say y is equal to mx plus c. 
But m is what? m is 1. So y equals x plus c. And we've got this point here, minus 1, 0. So 0 equals minus 1 plus c. So c equals 1. So therefore, my perpendicular bisector line actually looks like this actually it looks like this it is going through yeah it is perpendicular bisector and it's going through one going through one okay more or less okay so we've got y let me write it over here y is equal to x plus one there you go so that is the equation of the perpendicular bisector of pq Okay, now before we carry on, I'm just going to erase all of this so that we can continue working. Okay, because I need the space. Please, guys, if you remember that if you didn't understand what I was doing or if it, I did it too quickly or erased it and you're still looking at it and thinking, I still copy. Go and watch the recording. Go watch the recording, please. It's the best way to do it. Okay, now, no. Okay, it's free. Well, except for the data, but otherwise it's free. Let's use a different color. It's like purple. It says, given that the perpendicular bisect of PQ passes through A, okay, so it goes through A. Gosh, can this really control? So it goes through A. Okay, right. It goes through A. Okay, show that the coordinates of A are minus 7, 6. Okay. So we know that y is equal to x plus 1. And they're saying, given that the perpendicular bisector PQ passes through point A, this is A, show that the coordinates of A are minus 7, 6. But do you agree we've got the equation PA, which is y is equal to 2x plus 8, and we've got the equation of the perpendicular bisector, which is y is equal to x plus 1. So this point here is where these two lines meet, okay? So I can simultaneously equate. We've got y is equal to 2x plus 8 and y is equal to x plus 1. So we can find out what that point is. So we're going to let them be equal. We're going to go x plus 1 is equal to 2x plus 8. So therefore we've got minus x. I'm just taking this across is equal to 7, therefore x equals minus 7. Woohoo, we're on a roll, we've got the minus 7. And now what do we do? We substitute it into either of these two to get the right, the y value. And quite candidly, I'm going to substitute into that one because it's easier. So we've got a y is equal to minus 7 plus 1, which equals minus 6. Ta-da! So therefore we now know that a is minus 7 minus 6. Awesome. Now it's to determine the equation of a circle. Okay, so the formula for the equation of the circle that's not centered on the origin is on your formula sheets. Okay, I promise it is. It is x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared, where a and b are your points on your center. So it's going to be x minus I don't know why I put a big square bracket. Minus 7 squared plus y minus minus 6 squared is equal to r squared. I'm going to raise a little square bracket. Okay, so let's continue. So do you agree that becomes x plus 7 squared plus y plus 6 squared is equal to r squared? Easy peasy, right? Now, the only other thing we need to do is find out what the radius is. So, do you agree that AP is a radius? They've told us that AP is a radius. AQ is also a radius. It's pretty obvious because it's on the circle. So, we need to find the length of either AP or AQ. It really doesn't matter which one you do. I'm just trying to see if we've done it before and we haven't. So, we need to therefore find the length of AP. So, Let's do that. We know the formula for the distance is equal to the square root of x2 minus plus, no, let's try again, minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. And remember what I said to you, it doesn't matter which way you go with these. Okay, so therefore, 
to find the radius. Okay, remember the radius, we want the radius squared. So to get the radius squared, all we're going to do is go x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And since we've already assigned p as number 1 before, we're going to keep p as 1 and we'll just let a be 2 for this example. So we've got minus 7 minus minus 3 squared plus y is minus 6 minus, that's positive 2, all squared. Okay, which equals minus 7 plus 3 is minus 4, so it's minus 4 all squared, plus minus 6 minus 2 is minus 8 all squared, and I've just run out of space, so I'm going to erase the purple stuff over here. Right, and then I'm going to say, okay, fine. So therefore, we've got that r squared is equal to minus 4 squared is 16 plus minus squared is 64, minus 80 60 squared is 64. So that becomes a 4 and a 6 is a 10, carry 1, 6 and 4 is, 6 and 1 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So therefore, it's x plus 7 squared plus y plus 6 squared is equal to 80. There you go. So that's the equation of the circle. And finally, they say determine the length BC. Hmm. Interesting. Determine the length of the line BC. So we know that B is at minus 1810, right? And we know that C cuts this. Okay. Right. Let me just read this. It says P is minus 3, 2, and Q is minus 1, 2. Our two points in the circle A. The equation of the tangent is P is 2y plus x. B is minus 18, 10, so that it's a point outside the circle. The line BC is a tangent to the circle at C. Okay, the reason I'm concerned. Okay, we know the equation of the circle. It is x plus 7 squared plus y plus 6 squared is equal to 80. Okay, now I'll tell you what my concerns are about this question. Okay, we know that BC is a tangent and therefore we know that it's perpendicular to AC. Agreed? Um, we don't know. We know the length of AC. Wonderful. Is square root 80. Um, okay, let's have a look at it. So, let's have a look. Okay, what do we know? We know the length of this is square root 80. Okay, because that's the equation of the circle. Okay, we've just worked out the circle centered on that. So, we know the length of this is square root 80. Okay, they want the length of... The, oh, there we go. I'm being a doffy. Okay, we know that this is 90 degrees. Okay, and we know the length of this is square root 80 because we've just said that the radius of the circle is square is 80. That's r squared. So we now need to find the radius is going to be the square root 80. If we find the length of these two, this this length here, okay, do you agree that that is the hypotenuse of this triangle, the red triangle? And if I've got AC and I've got the hypotenuse, then I can definitely get BC using Pythagoras. So that's what we're going to do. So the next thing that we're going to do is find the length of AB. So we're going to go AB equals the square root of, and we're going to call this point 1, and we're going to call this point 2. So it becomes um, minus 18 minus minus 7 squared plus y minus 10 minus minus 6 6 squared okay 
which equals the square root of minus 18 plus 7 squared plus minus 10 plus 6 squared. And you'll notice I'm doing this slowly to make sure that you guys are following because this is a nice level 4 question. So minus 18 plus 7 is minus 11 squared plus minus 10 plus 6 is minus 4 squared and that all has to be square rooted. So minus 11 is 121 squared plus 4 squared is 16. So that becomes the square root of 7, 3, 1, 37. It's the square root of 137. So AB is the square root of 137. And now we need to find BC. So we're going to use Pythagoras. We're going to say we know that Pythagoras works like this. It knows x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Okay. Or you can say side 1 squared plus side 2 squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. We've got the hypotenuse and we've got one side. So we want to find the second side. So this means that it's s2 squared is going to be the hypotenuse squared minus s1 squared. Okay. Understand that. So now, the hypotenuse squared is going to be the square root of 137, okay, squared, minus this one, the square root of 80, all squared. And that is the sides of side 2 squared. So then we've got that this is 137 minus 80, so that's a 7, and 13 minus 8 is 6. And that is S2 squared. So the size, the length of line BC is the square root of 67. Now it doesn't say put it, leave it in third form. So I would actually work it out and I would go square root, square root of 67 equals 8.19. So it's equal to 8,19 units, whatever these units may be. Hmm, nice question. I like that question. Okay, wow. Okay, so do you see that we've done tangents to circles? We had a circle being sent to the non-centered. We had to get an equation of the circle. We had to do perpendicular bisectors, which we haven't seen for a while. So they can ask you just about anything in analytical geometry. Okay, let's do this question. Right? Why? Because this question will remind you about things like parallelograms and things like that. Okay, so we've got P is minus 5Y, Q is minus 7, 4, R is X0, and S is 11, 6, and the vertices of a parallelogram, okay, with T being the intersection point of the diagonals, QS, it says QS does not, um, sorry, QS does not pass through the origin. QS does not pass through the origin. Please note that it says that. Okay. Of the axes. Okay. Now it says, calculate the following, the coordinates of T. T. Oh, okay, right. So what do we know about these things? We know that T, because this is diagonals bisect each other on a parallelogram. This is what's happening. It's diagonals bisect each other. Okay, so T is going to be the midpoint of QS, okay? So T is the midpoint. So we're going to have to find X1 plus X2 over 2, Y1 plus Y2 over 2. So x1 is going to be minus 7 plus 11 over 2. And then it's minus 4 plus 6 over 2. And I know I'm doing the studies just to make sure you understand. So minus 7 plus 11 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's 2. And minus 4 plus 6 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So t is 0.21. 0.21. Okay, so now we've got the coordinates of t. Now it says the values of x and y. Oh, so they want this x and this y. Okay, now remember that these lines are parallel, okay? This line is parallel with this line, and this line is parallel, because their parallelogram is not 
equal parallel with that line. So in other words, if you see that this graph, this line here, has gone across by a certain number in the x-axis, then this is also going to have gone across. Okay, let me explain it to you another way. Let me just draw something here quickly. I could say to get from P to S, I need to go up a certain amount and I need to go across a certain amount. And because this is a parallelogram and those lines are parallel, the amount that I go across here and the amount I go up here is the same. So that has to equal to this and this has to equal to that, okay? So from here, I went from minus five all the way through to 11. So do you agree that I went across by 16 units, okay? Which means I need to go across by 16 units over here as well. I need to go across 16 units. So minus seven plus 16 is going to be nine. Okay, so the X value of R, the X value of R is nine, hang on a minute. So let me just erase all my yellow writing now. So the X value of R is nine. Okay. Now we want <clears throat> the Y value, hang on a minute, <clears throat> so that there is nine. Now we want the Y value. Do you agree, again, same principle, the amount that this goes up in the Y axis is the same as the amount that this goes up in the y-axis, and this has gone up from zero to six. It's gone up six units. So this has to also go up six units, but it's from minus four. So it goes from minus four plus six is two. Okay, so the x value here is nine, and the y value is two. Now it says they want the equation of SV, 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 which is the median of triangle SQR. So they want the equation of SV, which is the median of SQR. So it is pretty obvious from the diagram, which they kind of we kind of cheating on at the moment, is that it is obvious that we have got V is the midpoint of QR. Okay, so if you didn't know that the median of a triangle includes the midpoint of the base, then you can see from the diagram um, that it is. Okay, um, just a second. So it is dropped down to the midpoint of the base, okay? And it's joining the vertex to the midpoint. That's what the median does. It joins the vertex to the midpoint. So what we need to first do is find that point there, the midpoint of QR. And then all we need to do is use that point and that point to find the equation of that line. So let's find the midpoint. Okay, so V is going to be minus 7 plus 9 over 2, minus 4 plus 0 over 2, which is going to be what? Minus 7 plus 9 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, minus 4 plus 0 is minus 4 divided by 2 is minus 2. So that is my V, okay? Now, to find the equation of SV, I've got two points. I've got 11, 6, and I've got 1 minus 2. So do you agree that I can say, okay, fine, I can find the gradient of this, or I could use the formula y minus y1 is equal to mx minus x1, which is kind of the same thing as finding the equation, I mean the gradient. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the gradient, okay? So you can either use it in this form, or you can say m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It really doesn't matter which form you use. So I'm going to call this point 1, and I'm going to call v point 2. So y2 is what? y2 is minus 2. So it's minus 2 minus y1, which is 6, all over y1 I mean, x2, which is 1, minus y1, which is 11. Okay, 
So it becomes minus 2 minus 6 is minus 8 over negative 10, which is 4 over 5. Okay, so it's a positive gradient, which we like. It's supposed to be positive gradient. Okay, so we've got the gradient and we've got a point, so now we can substitute to get this line. So you've got y is equal to 4 over 5x plus c. The gradient, we've got it's 4 over 5, and I'm going to use this point, 1 minus 2, because it's easier than 11 and 6. You don't have to, but that's what I would do. Okay, so we've got minus 2 is equal to 4 over 5 times by 1 plus C. So you've got minus 2 minus 4 over 5 is equal to C. So therefore, we've got minus 1 and a fifth. No, I'm wrong. We have got minus two and four fifths. Okay, you've got minus two and four fifths. Um, you've got minus two and four fifths is C. So therefore, the equation of S V is Y is equal to four over five X minus two and four fifths. Okay, grade 12, we will continue with this question tomorrow and you'll notice that there's quite a nice couple of questions. It's about the inclination of PR, line passing through by six, the area of the parallelogram, the gradient, show whether they're perpendicular and things like collinear. Don't forget about what collinear is. And over here, we're going to get back to our circles and circle geometry and there's a nice completing the square, which you may or may not remember. So we need to go through that. And I think that's it for what I've done so far with regards to the questions we're going to go through. Right, so I hope you've learned something in this lesson. Please join me tomorrow and we will continue with analytical geometry. Have a great evening.